What's up, everyone? I'm James Bainey, and I'm here with Kyle Larson, and we are getting ready to tell you basically what happened in the book Thrawn Ascendancy Chaos Rising. Um, the reason we're making this video for you, we want to be uh, kind of short and concise, give you just a general overview that's completely spoiler filled. Um, we, we do this for the people who, uh, you know, maybe never had the time to read it or maybe just thought, ah, I'll just pass on that one or whatever. But you kind of still want to have an understanding of maybe what happened or maybe what we say in this book will interest you. And so you say, yeah, I'll pick it up and I'll get all the details because we are just going to kind of like summarize the story for you and basically just give you, like I said before, what happened in this book book um kyle how you doing real quick i'm doing good how are you and there's there's Thank a lot that happened in this book <laughs> there's a lot um so th i think i think the basic thing here is is there are kind of like two stories that are happening all and they kind of jump back and forth um, they do a really good job at doing that in this case because they label, you know, this is the current story and then these are like memories and things that have happened in the past. For the sake of what we kind of understand the story to be, um, that all, all the, the thing that we're going to be talking about is the stuff that happens like in the more like current time. The memories portions, like we were saying, that flip back, all of those are kind of things that have happened in the past that just kind of accentuate how we got to the next point in the story. Um, while they are relevant to the story, you know, and they're, they're kind of uh, things that happen in Thrawn's past. Uh, so they're, they are canon events, if you will. Um, I think, I think if somebody were to tell you, what is that book about? They're going to describe this, the, the more future timeline as like, that is the, the crux of the book. The other ones are memories. These are chapters, uh, yeah. chapters of the book. Um, how it, how it starts. Um, basically the Chiss ascendancy is ruled by nine families and, uh, two of the most powerful families there are the myth in the uh, Erezi and family members, um, it gets very Tolkien, by the way. Like, family members yeah. <laughs> are not always <laughs> determined by blood. Oftentimes, uh, promising military cadets or officers are offered places within the families. Um, and Thrawn is approached by the Myth family, and therefore that's how he gets recruited, which is interesting because his name has been Mithron Yorodo for the longest time. And everybody's like, Oh, well he just kind of shortened it to the Thrawn. Th his name starts to make more sense now uh, with this book, his name and every other uh, Chiss name in this book, because they, the first part of their name is the family that they're with. So myth. And then Ron Yorodo is like his first and last name. And then, so he's kind of like General Neuron Roto, you know? It's like yeah. Myth Ron Neuroto. And then they usually shorten their name by taking the tail end of their family and the first part of their first name. That's where we'll get to some of the other characters that you can kind of tell what family they're in based on where they're, what their name starts with. It's kind of interesting. So you learn yeah. a lot of like the details of the Chiss family and stuff like that. Chaos totally. Rising specifically establishes both the political hierarchy of the Chiss and the era of the unknown regions and the, and of which the ascendancy like exists in it. Um, that unknown regions to them, they don't call their own place, the unknown regions. It's kind of, they call it the chaos. Uh, so it's just like wild space, if you will. Um, it's extremely difficult, uh, to navigate. So many of the civilizations, they're isolated and, uh, there's not very many dealing with each other basically. So every civilization kind of just keeps to themselves. And then, um, I don't, I don't know if you have this in your next section or whatever, but like there's these, there's groups of people that are just like navigators that can yeah. kind of like take you from here to there. And then the Chiss have their own version of that, which we've seen in other books called the, the coincidentally enough, the Skywalkers. And we'll learn a little yes. bit more about them. Well, uh, let's, let's pick up uh, from here. What, what's next? Yeah. Well, um, so we, 
learn about Thrawn's rise through the ascendancy in flashback scenes, what you were referring to, the memories chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so we learn about not only that, but kind of his the way that he relates to others and, and his relationships. Um, but aside from the memories part, there's a real time crisis that's kind of unfolding in the opening of the book when the Chiss homeworld is attacked by this unknown alien species. And it opens pretty quickly. There's, you know, three or four ships, I think, that just show up and start bombarding the planet, which is a pretty brazen thing for, you know, again, these a lot of these alien species are aware of one another, but they don't really kind of deal with one another at all. And there's kind of this tenuous piece. But um, so at this time, Thrawn is a captain when we meet him um, in, in like present day of this. And he has his own ship called the Spring Hawk. And um, he's tasked by the Ascendancy um, or not by the ascendancy, but by a general that he's, he's you know, close with um, to go learn about the mysterious attackers because they know that that Thrawn is um, call he's kind of like the Sherlock Holmes so uh, of of the Chiss and he eventually finds out that this alien race that attacked them they're called the uh, Nicar Dune is that that right Nicar Dune or Nicar Dune Nicar Dune yeah Nicar Dune okay um, so there's. Again, there's a few other neighboring civilizations that that have had kind of a tenuous history with the Chiss. And as Thrawn learns more about the Nicardune, he finds out that the Nicardune is trying to form these kind of these alliances with them. And um, so that's where he really starts to take notice and sees how that could be a potential threat to the Chiss. And he focuses his investigation really on what the dealings are between the Nicardune and these other um, these other uh, species. So I'll yeah. turn it back to you. Um, yeah. A fun little thing too to add there about the spring hawk is that um at the beginning of like the chapters, uh at, at the beginning of the book, the mainline story, he's getting the spring hawk back. And throughout the memories, we learn a little bit more about how he lost the spring hawk in the first yes. place. That's a good point. Um because he's because uh, if there's something that you want to learn about Thrawn in this book, uh, if you're not reading it, it's that he he kind of uh, was an up and coming person. He made some choices that kind of made some of the political people upset, and yeah. then uh, he kind of like had to take a step back. And then now the beginning of this book is him trying to pick himself back up and earn his place back in. And you're kind of getting those stories like simultaneously. Yeah. He's um, not in the, the best of graces with most of the ascendancy. A lot of them are correct. Skeptical. Yeah. So on his way to figure out who these attackers are, he realizes that the Nicardune are led by someone named Yiv the Benevolent. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and that, and what they're basically doing is they're using the neighboring species to do their dirty work. They're kind of like, like locusts that are just kind of taking over the, the planets around. So that's why they're Thrawn and the Chiss are being attacked by certain people. And they're like, wait a minute, this doesn't add up. And they're trying to sort back why, uh, why these people are attacking them. And it's because Yiv the Benevolent and the Nicardoon are kind of taking over um, their... Uh, area of the chaos if you will yeah. um as the investigation continues a fellow myth uh named Th uh, it, now here's the other thing too i forgot to correct you on the notes here is it thalia or thalius because thalius oh. is i think how they say it in the book oh okay i thought it was thalia in the book but um let's see here oh it is we thalius. can double check that it's thalius, thalius. no it is okay yep. That right. was a typo that just Th kept Thalia on going. I, I, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I think um, I was reading okay, my so, notes that I had taken, yeah. Fair. Uh, so a fellow myth named Thalius joins Thrawn on the ship and serves as a caretaker to a young Skywalker named Cheery. Um, she's also... So Thalius is kind of being approached by someone in the hierarchy in, to say spy on Thrawn. We want to take him down. We don't trust him. Right. So she's kind of been approached to spy on Thrawn. Um, and that's from someone within his own family because he, they kind of fear Thrawn as a possible person who could be really great, but who could also like tear the family down if he does the wrong thing. So he's a, he's like a 50, 50 shot at this point. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. They, they just, they they're kind of, uncomfortable with him so they're in the process of trying to maybe find something to kind of shut him down they're like yeah it could be great but we don't want to risk it so we're trying to stop him 
Yeah. Um, so he is kind of, he's going against, he decides to go against um, basically like chess protocol and mm -hmm. do a pretty invasive thing, which is he poses as a art scholar, which we all know how much Theron likes his art and he likes to use his study of art to kind of um, evaluate, you know, cultures that he's not familiar with. Um, so he makes his way to one of this, these alien worlds where Yves the Benevolent, or Benevolent is hanging out and um, actually meets him, poses as somebody else. But once Yves learns his true identity, he learns it from a mutual acquaintance who happens to be a navigator who's, you know, helps, helps Theron actually get there and makes the introduction. Um, then that's kind of when the, the conflicts really start. And um, Eve wants to wants to get him, wants to capture him because he sees him as a threat, and that brings um, the battle to a head, and it finally pits the Nicodune against and their allies against the Chiss. So, mm -hmm. Thrawn eventually ends up escaping, but he realizes that they need to find new allies because this is this is going to get real for them. So he takes the young Skywalker child. Her name's uh, Sherry. Um, and they pilot to Batu, and then we have an intersection here because he's he's they're aware of the Republic, they're aware of the Clone Wars that are going on, but he wants to kind of figure out like who you know maybe what side that they should be on. So this is where the the story actually intersects with Thrawn Alliances, which is also a, a very good book. Um, so the events of Thrawn Alliances actually unfold off the page, and they say about five weeks passes by the time that Thrawn returns to the Chiss space, and he's come back mm -hmm. with a Republic deflector shield, which is, um, they, they kind of hint that that's, it's a superior technology to what they have, and they're hoping that this will give the Chiss an advantage in the, the forthcoming conflict. Yeah, and another thing to add to that, too, is while Thrawn and Cheery are off doing the whole book, basically Thrawn Alliances, Yeah, um, the other character that we talked about earlier, Thalius, she has been pulled back in to, to, to report back on Thrawn and everything, and she's learned enough about Thrawn, like his tactics and his ability to kind of read people and understand people has rubbed off on her enough that she's kind of able to get out of needing to provide that information, that spy information. And she, um, because she was technically part of the myth family, but she was like brought in as what they call a merit adoptive. So like she mm -hmm. is like sort of in the myth family, but like really low on the pole she decides to to take the trials uh which are which is like a, a test in order to get her like more officially into the family and become what they call trial born uh yes. which is like the next step up and then trial borns from there can continue to move up um but it's just kind of interesting because like i said like these these portions of the book not yeah. only are they connecting canon but they're just like massively world building yeah. on um the the chiss uh and how that whole you know species and uh system yeah. works uh, and as we're describing to this point, too oh sorry i was just gonna say as we're describing this this sounds really complicated but when you're actually <laughs> reading this in the book it it really does flow pretty smoothly so don't be intimidated yeah. by yeah. that so um so Thrawn basically sets in a, a plan where Thalius and Chiri uh, are are going to be captured as you know like these fake hostages if you will um by yiv and the the mission is actually like to deliver a message to the allies it's this it, it's it's a big like sherlock holmes kind of like reveal at the end like thrawn has this big plan set in motion you watch everything kind of play out and by the end of it um yiv is is I don't know, tricked, I guess you could say, uh, with a false message. Uh, and unknown to him, Thrawn has actually sent these other messages informing the allies that Yiv will uh, distort, you know, and, and it, it, he's a Try liar them, and yeah. it causes these other people. And Thrawn already knows how those other people will react to that news because he studied their art. And, and I don't know, it's just, it's <laughs> exactly kind of like what you would expect out of like, uh, a, a, a mystery novel or like a political thriller like the the main protagonist of the movie is going to like somehow reveal his whole plan and all the pieces yeah. fall into place exactly as he wants it to be I mean it's a Thrawn novel this is kind of what you expect um, yeah so um, 
after after that they were able to overcome him they put him in this weird position he had to make a choice and they were able to defeat him uh and then thrawn has now officially captured yiv and he returns the ascendancy uh where we learn thalius has been that this is what i was talking about moved up in the family no longer Mm -hmm. blackmailed she doesn't need to bring thrawn down anymore and the family patriarch reveals that they've kind of been um on Thrawn's side the whole time. I still think that there's like, there, there's a little section here too, where they talk about, um, these political high up members, one in the myth family and one in the Arizi family. Arizi, yeah. Um, they are still kind of like out to get him. And I think that that is going to be a, a through line and potentially yes. lead into like why Thrawn was, sent into the to to find out more about the empire in the first place because i think he was kind of like removed or whatever yeah Um, but uh then of course the end of the book has like a uh mysterious new character named uh individual named jixtus who is apparently uh yiv's boss yeah and he's probably going to be a bigger enemy in the long run um that that is basically it. No, but but I will say I will say this is crazy because we're telling you the entirety of this story, and not once did we mention Admiral Aralani, who yeah. is a like a massive character in this book. But the best way that to think of her is like Thrawn's most trusted sidekick. Like if Thrawn is Kirk, she is Spock. And they work so perfectly together um, on all their missions. And sometimes they go away from each other, but they're on the same side and they got each other's back. And yeah. um, and she gives I him don't know, validity. Like, she I, defends him when he's not there to defend himself. You know, absolutely. She backs him she up. Was like, yeah. She, yeah. And um, they are, it, it's like, it. they're basically just like two best friends. You know, it's, it's Sherlock and Holmes. That's another yeah. way to put it. I mean, well, when it, we, we the, meet, the, we find out their relationship. We find out why they're such good friends. You know, they've had each other's backs yeah. forever. And it's it's a really, that's yes. a really nice part of the story. Um, and she also is kind of an interesting uh, look into the just like system as well, too, because she started in the Arisi family and uh, then she was chosen and now is, is outside of the families, inside the bigger thing called the Chiss Ascendancy, which then... I'm I we I don't think we actually know like I we have always kind of said that Thrawn is loyal to the Chiss ascendancy we kind of think of him as someone in the Chiss ascendancy but he still says his name is Mithron you know yeah so it's like I apparently he stays in the family of the myth and stuff I, I don't know it's yeah it's good we're not here to review it um but we're here to tell you that if you want to learn more about um, the the Chiss and totally take a sidestep to all other things Star Wars as far as like this portion of the galaxy and uh, the, the Civil War and all that stuff. This is a total like in its own space kind of book. Um, it's political. It's uh, I guess you could say it's mystery. Yeah, a lot uh, of palace intrigue. Action. Yeah, it, it's military. It's world building. Um, there's a lot there. Um, you know, I've, I've had to think about, you know, how does it relate to like stories of relationship and, and hope and, you know, other things like that. Like the force is not in it. Lightsabers are not in it, you know, Mm -mm. uh, master and apprentice, uh, they're not in it, but you know, it's the, it's the war part more than the lore part. Um, so it, but it is still fundamentally star Wars. Yeah. And that's the the great that part I think about is, it. Yeah, I think that so. is about as summed up of a version as we can do of this book. That is basically what happened in Thrawn Ascendancy Chaos Rising. Um, if you want to check it out, please check it out and uh, write in the comments. Um, you know, if you watch the video, if you if you're not going to check it out, if you are, whatever whatever you thought of the story, if you are interested in maybe picking up the other ones, um, just I don't know. Let us know what you think. Make sure you give the video a like. Uh, you can find me on the resistance broadcast twice a week talking star Wars news and other things like that, as well as we have, um, another video on, 
uh, up on this book where we're just going to kind of get into more of our personal feelings, uh, review and have a, an open discussion. Um, and that's also available on the channel right now. You can find me online, uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Meyer trunks. Kyle, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Kyle D Larson. Um, and then I'm also writing for a book and comic reviews, mostly for star Wars news net. And then I occasionally contribute awesome. to what the force show as well. So. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Um, we'll see you guys later and may the force be with you. Thanks guys.